May 5th. We are here welcoming Oliver Schmidt with our guest speaker with effective internet and media monitoring in the context of crisis management. Oliver is the president and CEO, CEO of C4CS. He has 25 plus years of consulting. That's what did you start when you were 10? Um, training and coaching experience in crisis management, strategic communication, and organizational leadership. He does a lot of client work, management workshops, and presentations in several dozen countries. He's also the author of numerous peer-reviewed articles about a wide range of crisis management, strategic communication, and leadership topics. He, he, we have, I've actually heard a couple of his interviews with um, various domestic and international industry and mainstream media. And finally, he is a guest professor at some of the leading universities in multiple countries. We are very grateful to have him with us today. Our objective for today is to improve understanding of why customized internet and media monitoring is central to enhancing organizational resilience and what should be done to achieve those desired outcomes. If you have questions today, we're going to ask you to use the question pane just like we normally do. And as you heard, we the webinar is recorded and it should be available on our webinar page um, by Friday. And if you attend at least 35 minutes, you will receive a certificate of attendance. And with that, I will turn it over to Oliver. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much, Linda. I really appreciate the introduction. I'm excited to talk about uh, internet and media monitoring in the context of crisis management today. I wanted to go over uh, just a few things. Uh, first off, uh, I'm at the helm of C4CS company based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with our main office. We also have an office in Charlotte, North Carolina and representation in my home country with Germany. I'm a native of Berlin. The webinar timing today as conveyed previously, uh, I do want to point out that we have two participant polls. Um, I'm not very good when it comes to, to the polls in terms of handling that, so Linda is going to take care of that portion and I appreciate that. And uh, she has already mentioned participant questions. I am usually in favor of entertaining questions toward the end of my presentations. Um, but if there's anything important that comes up during the webinar and you want to convey that via the chat function or whatever, that's certainly fine. I'm much more used to Zoom as a platform than to go to meeting, but I certainly hope that we're not going to run into uh, any obstacles here as a result of my lack of knowledge as far as this platform is concerned. I would like to speak a little bit about my agenda for today next. I have fundamentals uh, typically at the beginning of my presentations. That's sort of to uh, set the stage and, and have a foundation for everyone to, to uh, understand where I'm coming from, how I see crisis management, because that's what we're talking about here in conjunction with monitoring today. And then I'm very interested in finding out what your thoughts are regarding the existing monitoring within your organization, uh, whether you have it and uh, how sophisticated it is and so forth. In fact, you will be visited under the Care to Share moniker, if you will, uh, toward the end of my presentation today uh, under a second slide that's going to paint, uh, Care to Share what your thoughts are following my presentation, the bulk of the presentation. And that's also going to be interesting to see if you uh, see things a little different maybe at that point. Um, we're going to talk about crisis phases and I actually have a slide under fundamentals uh, talking about pre-crisis, during crisis, post-crisis and then I will discuss and share with you my thoughts on what monitoring needs exist within the different phases, the three phases that I will focus on. Um, also, uh, under four, I will speak about internet and media monitoring solutions. Um, I'm not a representative of any tech tool that's out there. Um, I have used a number of the ones that are available that you will see on a slide that's going to come up under uh, agenda point four. But at the end of the day, I run a company that provides these services and utilizes the tech tools 
we have several in our arsenal with annual licenses, and I can certainly talk about this a little more if you have questions at the end of my presentation. And we're going to conclude today with the uh, important portion of the presentation, what you need, which is essentially just a summation of what I uh, went over and, and sort of highlighting the things that, in, in my opinion, based on many years of working in crisis management, utilizing, monitoring results and, and tools and fairly sophisticated setups to uh, arrive at information gathering that helps during crisis as well as before and following crisis. Um, and then we're going to have the Q&A. Uh, as, as I said earlier, I would love to uh, have most of the questions, at least if not all of them, toward the end of the presentation, and hopefully we will have ample opportunity to uh, dig a little bit deeper, depending on your uh, information needs on, on what you might want to know. Uh, and then obviously, I'm also available via email if you want to make contact. There is a uh, thank you slide with contact information. Uh, at the end of the deck, um, feel free to reach out following the presentation. One last word regarding the slides. I will make a handout available that has been discussed with Linda. I typically do that for i and uh, many other organizations uh, that I present for or conferences, whatever. Uh, that will be the slides that I'm using uh, in, in a format that will allow you to uh, jot down some notes and, again, get back to me in case you have any questions. Crisis defined. I typically uh, start by saying that this is what we use at C4CS and have over the last uh, 20 some years. Any adversity that severely disrupts business and causes damage to stakeholder trust, reputation, and the bottom line. The broad definition is one that has worked very well for us. If you have a different one, that's fantastic. Uh, but I did want to uh, throw this out and, uh, and let you. Uh, uh, think about this a little bit from, from what we do, or how we do things. This is one that has worked for us. A little reminder, uh, uh, Mitrov, uh, in today's world, and he said that many, many years ago, uh, he's a, a great guy and has, uh, uh, has had a, a wonderful career in, in our field. In today's world, it is not a question of if or whether an organization will experience a crisis. It's only a matter of what type of crisis will occur, what form it will take, and how and when it will happen. And I fully understand I'm preaching to the choir here, but I still want to mention it because we may have folks on this uh, webinar who uh, are potentially new to the discipline or coming from uh, a different discipline wanting to check us out. Um, so that's a, that's a little reminder that's uh, usually part of the presentation that I make. Crisis categories. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but uh, typically I distinguish between uh, natural and man-made uh, crises. Uh, there's a natural disaster in the upper left, um, and then we have a whole uh, lot of potentially man-made crises. I mean, the one center at the top could certainly also be the result of a natural disaster, a fire that uh, happens as a result of, uh, for instance, a hurricane or whatever else it may have been. Um, but this is to, just to give you a, a, a little bit of an overview here, and I might mention a few examples down the boat in terms of monitoring, but that has been very helpful. One thing I want to point out specifically, and we will talk about social media, I will address social media specifically uh, later uh, today. Uh, social media obviously plays a huge role. We call it internet and media monitoring at C4CS, and under media monitoring, we distinguish between traditional media, and uh, that would be print and broadcast media, TV, radio, and then obviously social media. Social media, because at C4CS, we do crisis management as well as strategic communication, and work a lot for these two, do a lot of work with these two areas overlap, if you will. So reputation management in addition to crisis management. Social media certainly plays a huge role in terms of crisis management nowadays, uh, whether it's social media that uh, exacerbates an existing situation that may very well have been a natural disaster initially, but now we're not responding correctly and all hell breaks loose in terms of uh, criticism levels uh, in terms of not being able to respond as we should. 
at least in the eyes of the, the stakeholders who are complaining. And then uh, the, the other area is fraud, data breach, Me Too, uh, stands for different types of uh, or categories of crises, transportation accident in the upper right. Just again, a, a little bit of a reminder regarding the breadth of things that, we, that we're looking at in terms of uh, crises and what might happen to any organization at any time. Now, the crisis management process is important for a number of reasons. I'd, I'd like to include it in, in presentations such as this one to make clear that we're talking about a, a process which is actually cyclical. Uh, the pre-crisis phase is preceded by the post-crisis phase, and in fact, one uh, may not even be uh, exactly distinguishable from the other uh, because change is an ongoing thing and caters to better anticipating, preventing, and preparing. But for our purposes today, because I will be speaking about the crisis phases in connection with the monitoring needs, I do want to remind everyone that during the pre-crisis phase, we want to anticipate, we want to prevent, and we want to prepare. And a lot of different things flow into that, obviously, whether it's uh, scenario planning, crisis scenario planning, it certainly is uh, training. I hope all of the organizations uh, represented here today have a good training regimen in place where we're exercising in order to see to it that the plans we have written, processes we have designed specifically for response to adversarial events actually work. And the people who are involved in the response understand what they're supposed to do and have practice. That's what it's all about because practice does make perfect. If unfortunately we do end up in a situation that can be characterized, I'm sorry, as the response to a crisis, then we would be in the actual crisis phase or the response phase, and then then uh, vocabulary such as contain, contain, control, mitigate certainly plays a role. I'm not going to go into that now too much, um, but I do want to point out that. These three phases, the pre-crisis phase, the, the response phase, as well as the post-crisis phase, which is all about recovery, evaluation, learning, and change, all three phases have to have monitoring of the internet and traditional social media attached to it. If we do not monitor doing all three phases, we're at a disadvantage. We're not going to be able to respond to adversarial events in the best way possible. And I will talk quite a bit more about this as we go along. But again, the uh, crisis management process is something that will certainly play a role in terms of looking to see that monitoring is established and set up within the organization to cater to the needs that any organization has within each of these phases. And a little bit more on that certainly later. Uh, another quick uh, reminder, because it does play into an area that's uh, also related to crisis management, issues management. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this later. We're not only looking at crises and, and the response to a crisis. We're also looking in terms of monitoring at how can we identify systematically opportunities, business opportunities? So while we're focused on, on crisis management now, I do want to remind people that in, in Chinese, and I used to live in, in Asia, um, this calligraphy includes two uh, symbols that in a pictorial language have very different meanings. The meanings are danger and opportunity. The Latin alphabet does not allow us to have, as is the case with pictorial languages, different concepts combined via visuals. For us, crisis is crisis. And then each of us may have a very different idea of what is part of that in terms of the concept. Hardly ever do I run into people who are not working in crisis management or issues management, and I ask them, well, what is crisis management to you? What do you understand 
is a part of crisis management. And hardly ever do I get the answer, unless it's someone who is, is more knowledgeable in this particular field, that crisis is really about opportunity and danger. In fact, out of crisis often comes opportunity. And COVID-19 has, has uh, taught many a company that by having to pivot, having to do things differently as a result of a pandemic, actually also uh, open up doors to new opportunities, whether it was new markets, whether it was new product developed, new services provided, you name it. Um, uh, but, but I do want to move on and, and now under fundamentals, uh, talk about two slides that are critical. Why monitor internet and traditional media content? I haven't answered that, at least not sufficiently, I believe. There are three bullets here. First of all, we do want to, and in fact have to, collect and utilize mission critical or strategically relevant, whatever you want to say there, information before, during, and following adversarial events. I already uh, walked you through the crisis phases. Um, obviously, we're, uh, it's, it's more of an introductory uh, uh, webinar in that I'm not really being too deep into crisis management concepts as a whole. But let's just revisit real quick, collecting, utilizing mission critical information before doing and following adversarial crises events is something that can only be done effectively if we have in this day and age monitoring in place. And by that I mean internet and traditional media content, internet meaning that it encompasses the social media piece of the puzzle. And it is the monitoring that will, along with many other things, obviously, enable better managerial decision making because we're in a position to have customized business intelligence, customized information at the fingertips on, of those that are in decision making positions within the organization. A lot of my work as a consultant. And I work a whole lot with C-level people, with uh, including very large organizations, interacting with CEOs and others in regard to the different phases that I outlined earlier, that I discussed earlier, but certainly also as part of the crisis response phase. And the the many years of working in this in this area have made it very very clear to me that number one, even the most decorated, if you will, CEO of any company, including Fortune 500, may find out very quickly that responding to a crisis is an entirely different task compared to running a business day to day. I've worked with a lot of folks who came into this thinking that they had it all figured out and they got humbled big time and at the end of the day said, you know what, Oliver, I did not think that this was going to be so complicated, that this was be that this was going to be so challenging in terms of my skills that I always thought I would be much better I was much better prepared for this. And one area in, in which companies, even very large ones, can certainly improve is in fact monitoring. Because that will, as I said earlier, provide the business intelligence that will then enable better decision making. And not only that, which is the third bullet, it will also improve, in part of the result of better decision making, better operational crisis response. That is, that is a very important aspect of it. And the third area, I actually have a slide that will um, explain that a little better, coming up in uh, just a minute. The third area when we're looking at crisis response and what needs to work together and collaborate, work hand in hand, is communication. I say it often, and especially to those who uh, may not want to, I don't want to say admit, um, but want to listen carefully when I say that without internal and external communication that works seamlessly, no crisis will ever be responded to as effectively as, as possible, period. And I'm not gonna deviate from that statement just because someone might think, well, communication is a nice to have, it is not. Simply put, 
without communication, we will not ever be able to mount the operational response to pretty much any crisis that is needed. The second slide that I have under fundamentals, which uh, talks a little bit more about monitoring, is key internet and media monitoring characteristics. And I will certainly discuss this a little bit more later. But let's just say at this point that uh, monitoring must be customized. It must be 24-7, 365, so it's a continuing effort. And it has to include traditional media, all internet content, any sources that can be included in siphoning away relevant information and again strategically relevant or mission critical or, or term, this terminology that I typically use here. The idea is to systematically detect, but not just that. It's not about dumping a whole lot of information into the lap of someone who doesn't have the time to even look at it. It's also about analyzing the information and it's about reporting all of the information that is relevant in, in very in a, in, according to a process that must be customized at all times. And in addition, not specifically mentioned under bullet two, but under three, we're talking about this process and the, the activity of monitoring only being effective when there is a customized approach in place in terms of selecting search criteria and it must be a human it cannot be just ai artificial intelligence it must be a human or humans that go about analyzing the content it must be someone who is familiar with issues with crises in the past for the particular organization with who is in what role within the organization and therefore needs to know about what has been detected and identified as mission critical. And lastly, in addition to the analysis, ideally there should also be recommendations coming out of the analysis in terms of what an organization should now do as this new information, this critical new information as a result of monitoring is available. And these are things that if, if there's any breakdown in terms of the reporting, in terms of the analysis, in terms of making recommendations and getting this into the hands of the appropriate people on the internal end, if there's any breakdown, we're going to look at a situation where our response to a, an unfolding crisis may already break down. Or if it doesn't break down as in completely falls apart, then it may be impeded and we will not be able to do as good a job as we would otherwise uh, be able to do. Here's the slide I, um, I already uh, uh, spoke about briefly a minute ago. Responding to a crisis, uh, collaboration is critical always, always, is about these three areas of response. Managerial, that's the decision making I talked about. Operational, that basically means all of the activities activities that we now mount in order to rectify the situation, the mitigation, the controlling the situation, and so forth. And then, very importantly, communication response. Again, nothing works without the uh, appropriate decision making or the activities that have to follow in terms of uh, mitigation. Uh, and the same is true for communication. If you don't have communication, for instance, between the different parties that are involved in the crisis response on the internal end, then it's not going to work. Okay. The same is true for external. If we don't talk to, uh, it could be regulators, it could be law enforcement, it could be uh, other stakeholders such as our customers, obviously, or vendors and so forth, uh, things are gonna fall apart. And I already mentioned the term reputation crisis or reputational crisis earlier. That's more on the communication end of things. But I do know that we actually do have, uh, in addition to uh, very good representation globally in terms of the participants of this webinar, we also have uh, a number of folks who represent the corporate communications function in, in addition to uh, finance, as, as well as uh, risk management, uh, crisis management, business continuity planning, and so forth. Um, then, care to share. Uh, this is where the first poll comes up, and I would like to um, read this to you. 
does your organization have a customized internet and media monitoring solution in place? And there, there are four options here. We do not have an internet and media monitoring solution in place. Our solution only provides usable intelligence during the pre-crisis phase or perhaps another crisis phase could be the response phase. We have one as in a solution, but I don't know how it works. Uh, that's, by the way, something I run into often. And then it turns out that there isn't a, a solution or at least not one that's remotely adequate. And under four, we do have an effective solution in place. And if um, yep, we're going to give it about uh, ten more seconds, and then I'm going to close. Okay. People are responding. Yeah. I'd... And it, one of the things that I'm seeing is that almost half the people say we we have a solution, but we but I don't know how it works. And so this is something that you can all do as um, when you leave this webinar is find out what your what your solution is. So I'm going to go ahead and share the results. So we, like I said, we ended up with about 44% saying that. So as I was talking, people were still doing it. Um, we have 31% of the people that do have a solution that represents all phases. 6% um, that that only does or takes care of the pre-crisis phase, and then almost 20% that don't have any internet monitoring solution. So I'm going to go ahead and, and hide the poll, and then you should be able to. Um, Keep moving on. Thank you, Linda. That's 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 very informative. I'm not surprised by these results. I've, I often ask uh, as part of presentations such as this one. Uh, I uh, sometimes have uh, a, a number that's uh, causing a little more headache in terms of not having anything in place. So when the percentage is, is higher than just reported and just shared by Linda, then uh, that's reason for concern, obviously. Um, we're going to talk more about why it's important to, to monitor and what the potential positive outcomes are. I want to thank everyone for responding to the poll as that is uh, in, informing me in regard to where you and your organizations uh, are at this point. And then we can venture into crisis phases and monitoring needs at this point. The pre-crisis phase, which is all about preparedness planning, getting ready, increasing crisis readiness, increasing organizational resilience is, is important for us to keep in mind in terms of a monitoring solution should be in place as it enables effective anticipation, prevention, and preparation. These were the three areas, if you recall, under the pre-crisis phase on the slide that talked about the three phases. If we do not have the monitoring in place, then critical information regarding, and I will now begin giving you examples, how do we even anticipate the crisis? It could be something that has to do with, let's say, for instance, we have a, we're a manufacturing company, we have a site in whatever state uh, or geographical area it may be, and we actually are aware that there are uh, groups of uh, community members who are not okay with what is happening on, at our site, at least the way they perceive it, or at least they, what they think is happening at our site. Um, there's criticism along the lines of potential pollution and health consequences, negative health consequences, as far as the folks who live in the area is concerned. Well, how about we use the internet? Uh, we use monitoring as a tool in order to keep tabs on those folks, and that's something that's fairly easy and it's not you do not need to, to have a uh, be a licensed investigator or whatever you do need the proper approach and tools in order to understand what's going on you need to maybe monitor some websites out there uh, potentially a uh, conversations online conversations you certainly want to be aware of letters to the editor in any local paper and so forth in other words, it allows us to understand better how our stakeholders are thinking about, in this particular example, what we're doing as a company at this particular site. And it informs us as to not only what they're thinking, but hopefully also what they're doing. For instance, if we become aware, if we become aware and I've been in those situations uh, any number of times, that there is a protest plant in front of the plant gate. 
And if this is an area where we have more media presence in terms of traditional media, then that's something that may become known to TV station so-and-so. And just like that, you have a TV crew show up. Um, if it's of a higher magnitude, maybe it's a company that has some, had some trouble in the past, and you may even have uh, a little more media presence there. And that's how things can turn out. And that's not what we want. So the monitoring should be in place during the pre-crisis phase for sure. If it is not functioning properly, and that can be the case, uh, if it hasn't been revisited, if search terms haven't been updated, if it's not issue specific, you name it, long list of possible, uh, possible reasons why it may not work as intended at any given time, then we will unfortunately, and that's the second bullet here, have to waste, I don't want to use the, or at least not highlight the term waste, but it, it is a waste in, in, in a certain way, precious resources during the crisis response phase, because now we actually do have to mitigate. We do have to respond. We're in reactionary mode. We're not proactively preventing. We're not proactively doing anything in order for that particular crisis event to never occur. We're now spending money and potentially a ton of money on several different fronts. There's the reputation aspect. There is the actual operational response to whatever it may be. And when I say operational response, a lot of people always, always think, well, this is manufacturing company related. Well, that is certainly not true. You can be a financial services company and you can have, just like any other organization, a data breach. You can have a cybersecurity related event. And what I mean by operational response here is certainly then putting in place the, the, proper, the proper process in order to have forensics happen, in order to get to the bottom of what really happened here as far as the breach is concerned and what do we need to do in order to undo what has happened, uh, reporting wise and so forth. So these are important things to remember during the pre-crisis phase. What is there to specifically monitor is the next question. Well, obviously issues that may or do already perhaps present opportunities for and this is what our focus is on a little bit more here, may develop into crises or are, are not only on the verge of developing into crises, but have already entered that, that stage, crisis stage. How about legislative and regulatory development that may or do already impact organizations? And I've uh, more recently, that's why I put these on here, uh, had the following examples, um, COVID-19, lots of changes. We're now waiting on OSHA guidelines here in the U.S. I'm sure in countries across the globe, we now have changes in terms of employee safety requirements. That's all stuff that we need to monitor. In the U.S. right now, we have the PRO Act. That's more on the HR side of things. We're monitoring for organizations in that regard as a company. That stands for the right to organize. Huh? So um, here in the U.S., Amazon recently had uh, something going on in Alabama uh, where, where there was potential unionization going on. For any company out there, uh, it's something that you want to have on your radar right now. What's happening? PFAS is something that's uh, a global problem. Uh, some companies have tackled it more than others. Um, it's an acronym that I have a hard time pronouncing whenever I attempt to do so, but let's just say it's the group of chemicals that's referred to as forever chemicals. It has to do, uh, historically speaking, with Teflon. Um, it's it's uh, chemicals that do not leave your body if they ever end up in your body, and pretty much all of us now have these types of chemicals in our bodies. Um, we've worked with, with companies in this, this area to um, to uh, uh, increase understanding uh, as far as stakeholders are concerned. And, and it's definitely something that in terms of monitoring on the chemical industry side of things, we, we've been doing for quite some time. I already mentioned data breaches previously. I want to reiterate here that data breaches are certainly an area that uh, is, is important to, to keep in mind and, and remember when it comes to um, including regulatory legislative development.
And then at the bottom, messaging, legal action, obviously other relevant activities by potentially or actually adversarial actual state, uh, adversarial stakeholders. So that could be competitors, could be protesters, different groups of people and organizations that we need to keep on, on our radar for sure. Impact assessment. Um, as, a, as a quick reminder, um, when you have a, a situation, and this is grouped under the pre-crisis phase for good reason, then typically management uh, follows the, the management view that is technical and analytical in terms of assessing the impact of a crisis. I see that uh, almost on a daily basis. Uh, if senior management is interested in hearing what the magnitude is, the probability, what are the known facts and the understood consequences, well, we have to live we have to minimize the liability. But does that really take care of emotion? And the answer is very clearly, no, it doesn't. The impact assessment does always need to include, and the work that needs to be done to make that happen must happen during the pre-crisis phase. That's why it's grouped as such in my deck. Impact assessment from a public or employee point of view, if you will, outside of the leadership team is effective or emotional. That means it's shaped by stakeholder perception. There could be stakeholder outrage. I mentioned the, uh, uh, the manufacturing facility and people living close to it. What if they feel very strongly that they are, as far as their health is concerned, impacted by that facility, and now there's outrage as a result of it. And any other scenario that uh, applies here um, is, is certainly one that needs to be on, on companies' radars as well. It's based upon personal experience and impact, and we often hear, including in the media, not fair, they don't have any feelings, they don't care about us, the, the empathy piece is missing. Yeah? So that's something that I wanted to discuss, albeit briefly, under pre-crisis. And then the last thing under pre-crisis is where do we, within our organizational structure, including the crisis response team want to have monitoring housed. Who is responsible for that? And I just put it under comps and PR uh, because that's where I usually find it to be uh, to be housed. But uh, obviously, it could could be anywhere. Um, the, the reason it's often um, under the uh, responsibility or, or those in communications PR of our, our responsible is because. It, it obviously does have to do with communication, and it has to do with social media and so forth. But the point that I want to make, uh, and, and what I want to make clear here is, is we do need to have responsibility for monitoring as we respond as the crisis team, and this needs to be done during the pre-crisis phase. We do need to have these responsibilities assigned. Everybody needs to know which primary and secondary or backup members within the crisis response team are responsible for what as it, as it pertains to monitoring. And that's why I wanted to uh, include this slide here. Now, as far as crisis response is concerned, we're through the pre-crisis phase. Unfortunately, we uh, have an event happening. It might be unfolding right now. It could be starting right now. What we want is comprehensive monitoring because only that enables us to mount that effective crisis response across organizational footprints that may be not just regional, it could be national, it could even be international, but whatever the footprint is, in order to reach the entirety of the organization, geographically speaking, you do want to have monitoring in place throughout that footprint. So if I have a company and something is happening in region A or B, then it may very well have an effect uh, on uh, regions other than that, however many there are. And I say regions because uh, this may be just a particular state or even a, uh, an area within a state, depending on the side of the or size of the organization. However, your monitoring needs to needs to include all of that footprint. That is very important. And enabling that crisis response across the footprint is one thing. You also need to enable it across the hierarchical structure of the organization and obviously across functional areas. And those may not always be uh, aligned 
with, for instance, the organization of footprint or whatever. Typically, you have a headquarters, uh, wherever that building may be. In this day and age, it may be people working remotely, even those in senior management and not having returned to the office yet. All of this needs to be taken care of. If it's not in place or not functioning properly, that's the second bullet, then the organization will unfortunately miss out on gaining valuable intelligence that may make the difference in terms of uh, how are we going to get out of this? Are we going to emerge from this crisis in okay shape, potentially in better shape in some ways? Think about, again, what I said earlier, there's opportunity in all this. Are we going to be in a position to seize opportunities that may very well present themselves as we're going through the crisis? Are we able as an organization to be flexible enough and creative enough to detect those opportunities and to jump on whatever opportunity is, is in front of us. And certainly on the crisis side, um, again, it goes hand in hand. Are we able to understand what needs to be done in order to overcome the crisis? And it goes back to the, you guessed it, managerial decision-making, the operational response to whatever is unfolding, and the communication that sort of pulls things together, including that reputation management piece. An uninformed response, one that does not rely upon intelligence, for instance, intelligence that has been generated utilizing monitoring, may look like this. Okay, people, the question is, should we deny first and then delay, or delay first and then deny? And that's obviously an exaggeration, although I have been in boardrooms or on the telephone with senior leaders, and while they did not say verbatim what you uh, see here, what was actually said uh, certainly reminded me, unfortunately, of uh, this particular cartoon. Uh, that's not what we want. What we want is we want to get the facts. There needs to be comprehensive 24-7, 365 internet and media monitoring in place. It's a must. It's not just a nice to have. So all of those who earlier doing the polling said, well, I don't really have anything in place right now. Well, the time to tackle this was yesterday. Human fact-checking and thorough analysis of collective information. I have come across a, a number of companies, and unfortunately the number is slightly increasing, as a tendency at least, that walk away from having people look at information and rely more and more on artificial intelligence. Uh, they claim that the uh, sentiment, for instance, is adequately captured by AI solutions. I beg to differ. I have looked into things very, very carefully, including more recently. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be any AI, AI uh, involvement or, or component, far from it. It's great to have that. But at the end of the day, we need people who understand the nuances of whatever issue, whatever crisis, crisis response we need to focus on in order to connect the dots, interpret information correctly, and understand who within the organizations needs to know about whatever it is that needs to be shared. AI cannot do that. You have to program it ahead of time, and then things get shared with people based on what has been uh, what has been included in the program. But if you arrive at a specific scenario where the people who typically hear about it are just not the ones that need to be included, at least not, not, it's not sufficient to only include those folks, then you need to have that information made available to others. And, and these decisions at the end of the day can only be made by those who are informed, staff members to have who have the knowledge and to go do what needs to be done in those types of situations. The reporting must be uh, and sharing internally must obviously be customized as well. Information sources uh, should include, uh, for instance, government agencies, mass media, social media, competitors, and so forth. What are the information needs? And I don't want to spend much time on this at all at this point. Let's just say that these are things that we do want to convey whenever we do communicate uh, on the heels of, of a crisis event, a crisis unfolding. Um, all of these things, I'm not gonna go through the list, are important. The last one at the bottom, what are you actually doing about it is critical and is often left out. That's 
uh, way to call it on, on this slide. Key messages, uh, that's just something that we use at C4CS. You may have your own way of doing things there. But, but we typically emphasize facts, feelings, action. Feelings, uh, empathy is the, is the key word there. And then talking about the actions, previous slide had that in bold again. That's what we want to see when we have clients talking about things in terms of a response to adversity. And then real quick for crisis communication, those are the tenets or keys that we use. I'm not going to go into it, uh, but do see to it that when you actually do communicate, you want to do so timely, you want to be truthful, you have to be consistent and coordinated. And that takes us to the post-crisis phase. What do we want to do there, and why is monitoring important? Well, number one, first of all, recovery, but then also evaluation, learning, and the necessary change will not happen as seamlessly and as effectively unless you have comprehensive monitoring in place. Because the monitoring has allowed you to gain intelligence, which has then been included in, for instance, crisis response logs. And without that intelligence being included in those logs, going back and studying the logs is only worth so much, right? Because you may not have critical information included as you did not monitor. But now that you have monitored, fortunately, the logs do include information regarding what it is, what is it that you did based on what information that was available at what point during the crisis response, you will in fact be able to have your after action reports be much more targeted and you will be able to much better identify those gaps that you want to get rid of as you move through the post-crisis phase. Communication with affected stakeholders as well as the managerial decision making and operations can be significantly enhanced. We already talked about it and you must have and in that case, get senior management.